Fear is the little dark room where negatives are developed. So if we know that if we are fearful instead of faithful and light-filled, we're going to run into those dark corners all the time. And the important part for us is to be optimistic. O-P-T-O-M-Y-S-T-I-C. Yoda was an optimistic, a trainer of the optimistic heart. Hi, my name is Mike Pritchard and I was up here for the Sheriff's Athletic League to uh, help for the Junior Giants and for the Sheriff's Athletic League to teach anti-bullying and uh, community unity and connection to the greater good. And it was great. The community's been great. I spoke to the elementary, then the middle, then the high school. Wonderful kids here. We're, we're blessed. Guys, it is my honor and pleasure to be here with you today. We had fun with the young kids today. And I'm really very seriously honored to be here with you today. Uh, we'll have fun, we'll think, we'll laugh, and uh, we'll learn some good stuff today. It's hard for us uh, counselors and parents and teachers to tell you guys how much we love you and how important you are to us. When my first son was born, I had a bunch of kids and took a bunch of kids in. When my first son was born, I used to wait up every night for his every breath. You know how babies cry? They go, And then he up one and goes, Wah! and my wife would go, get him! He's choking! And I'm like, Wah! the baby's going, ha, 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 take me to my mother. I need to be fed. Well, the more kids I had, shh, the more kids I had, the less afraid I got. That first kid, when you're a dad, first kid, you're always scared. Oh, no, icky, don't eat that. Give me that thing. Ick. Second kid, do not eat that. Ick. Ick. Third kid. Tastes good. <laughs> Run the fourth, go ahead and eat it. Did I get any better to be a dad? No, I just realized, blessed are the flexible, for they shall not get bent out of shape. We learn, because all kids go through what you did, we did. Early childhood development. Like when you're five. What's the difference between a five-year-old and a small puppy? After a while, the puppy stops whining. <laughs> And then you're eight, and a bird can land on your lip the whole year. <laughs> They're not the boss of me. It's like you're in it's not in your turn. And then you're in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Talk to the time you know the bomb is, you know, you're one of me, whatever, you know, just shut up, I don't think so, you're going to have Facebook, come on, Snapchat, shut up, I'm on Instagram. <laughs> And you're in high school and say genius things like, I'm tired of everybody telling me what to do. I'm going to join the Marine Corps. <laughs> oh yeah, nobody will tell you what to do there. Would you like breakfast in bed, Private? I like, I like high school girls on the phone. I'm going to just text them. I'm going to slap her. The high school boys on the phone. Uh, <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> and we're, <laughs> we're trying to help, you know, negotiate you guys. No generation has ever had this much technology coming at them this way. I mean, the technology coming at your generation of young people is unreal. Like my first, you know, I'm like, here's how you guys watch television. <laughs> or the guys were playing video games going
figure out how to help get everybody focused. And then we have life in general going on. Life in general. Life in general, earthquakes, fires, things going on that are hard. Well, listen, guys, focus in. Why is that important? Because, you know, I mean, if you pick up the newspaper and you see the amount of depression, you see the amount of suicides, if you see the amount of violence in schools, if you see the amount of triggered shootings from the rage and the anger, you start to figure out some stuff where grief leads to anger and anger can be detrimental to any community because of the violence that ensues with it, from it. Picture, picture, picture. How do we know? How do we find these things out? Well, I got a late eight-year-old kid. Not too far from here. I go, hey, who here has a responsibility? He goes, Mr. Mike, I got a responsibility that when my dad gets drunk and he beats on my mom, that I would take my baby brother and I hide the baby in the closet because my dad shook the baby before he heard him. I said, take hey, but he ought to sat down. I don't know if I was ready for all that, but you needed to get you needed to get that out right away, right? Yes, sir. I said, why do you think you needed to tell me that right away, Taylor? Mr. Mike, everybody needs to meet a kind stranger to tell their secrets to to get help. He's eight. He's eight. But he understands. The little boy you're picking on or teasing or letting get picked on or teased at school is someday going to be the paramedic that comes over to your house later on in life and lifts your infant son up out of the bathtub and saves his life with mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And the little girl that gets laughed at because she can't read well, she's dyslexic, and kids have been laughing at her since second grade because she's dyslexic. And also working on English as a second language. One day she'll be the nurse that sits up all night long with your mom in the hospital taking care of her after a car accident like you were there. The boy gets ripped on and teased and made fun of, called homo faggot all the time. That kid doesn't even want to come to school. He puts his earbuds in. He's sick and tired of the words that hurt so bad. One day he'll be the emergency room physician who saves a member of your family. And then you'll remember who he was in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. It's not the bullies that hurt us the most. It's our best friends and classmates that don't defend us. Cesar Chavez said there's two forces in the world. The force that pushes people down or the force that lifts people up. There's a girl that goes to school here. She's got a mom at home with breast cancer. After all the stuff that's happened in our county. And she takes care of her little brothers and sisters and packs their lunches and gets their homework done and gets them off to school. And when she comes to school, there's some snarky boys that have to say something about her hoodie not being washed, and her hair not shampooed, and trash talk about her. And she's a sensitive and kind of shy and awkward kid who snickers along with it, but is depressed inside. And if you ever did get to know her and reach out to her, because she sits alone and she kind of self-isolates, one day you might hang a $100,000 piece of her artwork on your wall at home because nobody but nobody can paint California like her and she's on her way to a great art scholarship in New York. You just don't know it yet. She's a gift. And we're young and we're immature. And sometimes we're hard on each other and after so much sadness and so much hardship, we're harder and it should be just the opposite. We should learn and there's not a kid in the room that hasn't been lonely or sad. I had a kid who's uh, 14 years old, smartest kid I ever met. He's such a genius. He goes, I, I was talking to him on a, one of my PBS series. He goes, I said, could you tell me what happened to you? Why you wanted to do this about being resilient and coming back from hardship? He goes, yeah, he goes, my dad got sick. And then he got all better, but then he just dropped that unexpected. He was like the hub of the wheel in the whole family, right? We, we needed them. And now I'm like 15, 14, and I'm trying to hold the whole family together. And I said, could you describe your depression? You're such a great artist. Yeah. 
Depression is when you're encapsulated in a large glass globe and you can't reach out and touch anyone and no one can reach in and touch you. And unless your heart and spirit shatter that globe from the outside or you allow a family member or friend to shatter from the inside, you could remain in doom, unable to touch, unable to feel, but going through life pressed up against this snow globe numb. Know what I mean, sir? Wow. Yeah. So the deal is, we help each other, not hurt each other. Use your words as shields and not as swords. As shields to defend each other. Watch and be gentle, gentle, gentle with how we treat each other. Respectful. Hurt people hurt people, but wise people rise people. In courage, give strength to the heart, not discourage, take strength away. Thinking about how we treat each other. That's why I love little kids. They're hilarious. If you love little kids like I do, they have such wisdom in them. They crack me up. My little boy comes in all the time at 3 in the morning. He's a big comedy writer now. He's got a bunch of hit comedy shows. But when he was, he was little, he comes in. Daddy! They always take your eye and go like this. I go, what? I took my daughter Katie Rose down to the bank with me when she was three. A little three-year-old, they blurt. They're down there like doo 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 doo, and I'm signing this check. And this lady three times up does the big sneeze. She goes, eh, 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 and the whole bank stops. <laughs> and he goes, eh, and I go, Katie, what are you saying that lady? I wanted her to go. God bless you. She goes, cover your mouth. <laughs> Look at cover your mouth. And when you're around kindergartners, you can blurt anything. I was always around kindergartners. You know, hey, I was in Angel's camp. I go, hey, boys and girls, who takes care of the plants and flowers? Because you need fresh air, sunshine, and love. And this five-year-old goes, no. Yeah. I said, who said no? I did, because my dad grows trees in his closet. <laughs> now in Harlem, he's an ER doctor in the pediatrics. When he was, you know what I get mad, he'd make me burst out laughing. Like late at night, he'd go, this just come out of nowhere. This is more sleep, my wife and I are sleeping, got a bunch of household full of kids in here. Daddy! Daddy! I don't know, want to drink of water! No! No water! You'll have to go to the bathroom, fluff your pillow, mom and dad are sleeping, don't wake us up like that! It's like a horror movie. <laughs> what? One day, drink of water. No, Brian, no. Don't make me come up there and spank you. And my wife goes, you have never spanked him one time. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, oh. five minutes later. Daddy! What? When you come up to spank me, will you bring me a big glass of water? <laughs> <laughs> then, like, kids are so, like, they're also wise, too, right? Like, they, they have, it's just amazing. I go, don't overstand, understand. And one of the little kids goes, but as well, don't you think we need inner standing as well, sir? <laughs> wow. I said, what'd you learn today? Because I tell them, you know, like, the thing is, they asked Helen Keller, it must be hard for you to be blind. And she said, well, it would be if I had no vision. We see with our hearts. I go, wow. That's, wow. And I said that to the kids. I go, what'd you learn today? The little five-year-old goes, don't let their bad day be your bad day, or your bad day be their bad day. Don't play angry tag with people. <laughs> 
I go, wow. <laughs> I'm pretty smart. And I had another five year old. I go, what'd you learn? Don't let your sad turn to mad, because then it all gets bad. <laughs> <laughs> so smart, right? In another way, right? And that's the thing that's funny about little kids. Little kids can teach you because they're unfiltered, you know? They'll just say whatever comes up, they'll crack you up. Um, just whatever blurts into their brain. But in a moment, in a heartbeat, they have some things to teach us about how we treat each other. Because it's unfiltered. And we, we unlearn it as we go along. There's this whole new study called ACE. You can look at it and Google it. It's called Adverse Childhood Experiences. At Harvard Medical and at Johns Hopkins Medical, and in Scotland, we're finding out that early traumas in childhood can lead to later on big problems in life. We love you guys. Think now about intervening early. Ice, intervene, confront, enlighten. Get wise about emotional trauma. I'm not talking to your brains today. Today, I'm talking about community unity. Hurt people hurt people, but wise people rise people. Figuring out how we do this together is how we get better from the grief that hurts us and the sorrows and sadness that we sometimes shove down. Anger is just a D from danger. Think about how we treat each other. That's why it's really important that we start thinking about brain wise, heart smart. We're finding that emotional intelligence is the most powerful thing that we can do for ourselves. No, today I'm not talking to you about your grades. I don't care about your grades today. Because here's what I can tell you. There's a little boy who went to school here not long ago who became a paramedic. He went and he signed up for the military. He came back as a medic. And he's out there on that highway. And he never had above a C in his entire time in school. But if that kid sees your family member on the highway crushed in a car accident, he's jacking up the jaws of life with gasoline splashing up under his Nomex pants. And he could risk his life or maybe give his life to save your family member. And he's standing, he's such a nice kid, he's talking to him. All the other firemen and paramedics back away. Because they know, in a heartbeat, he could give his life and lose your family member, but he stays there. And isn't he a genius too? I don't care about his grades. He's got a heart, right? You know what I mean? That's what it's about. What's, what's genius like, you know? Like that's why, I had a kid who was dyslexic, so smart. Inner city Chicago, he goes, hey man, Mr. Mike, he's not, he goes, did you know that the words silent and listen have the same letters? I go, wow, L A S T E N S. Wow, how'd you know that? Oh man, I'm 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 dyslexic. I call myself light gasic, but everybody makes fun of me and calls me stupid, but I'm smart in another way. I go, wow. Wow. He goes, yeah. Did you know that the words silent and listen, secure and rescue have the same letters? Reactive and creative have the same letters. Did you know that heart and earth have the same letters? And did you know that blame, the word blame is just me at the end with blah, blah, blah in front. <laughs> and shame is just me at the end with shh, shh, shh. That's how teasers and bullies work. They keep you quiet, man. But you should be opening up instead of keep quiet. Shame. I know all that, and you know, they call me stupid, but I'm smart in another way. I was a kid who was learning different when I was a kid. You know, I had attention deficit disorder, hyperactivity, but you know, <laughs> I work at Skywalker Ranch now for George Lucas going, Fear is the path to the dogs. <laughs> Can you imagine I had ADD? Oh, <laughs> 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 take it off. He goes, "Thank you for preaching, you had ADD." <laughs> 
Oh, Steve, I have ADD. I know what it is. Hey, you know how many ADD people it takes to screw a light bulb? No, how many? Hey, you want to go to a Giants game? <laughs> <laughs> but we're all learning different. Every one of us, and there's a lot of kids who are learning different. I had a kid who was Pismo Beach. He got up and shared. He goes, you know what? You call me the school loser, the school owner, but you don't know me. I have high-functioning Asperger autism. I can't stay in a lot of noises, so I kind of get alone by myself in the cafeteria and library because I get bad headaches. And uh, but everybody calls me a shooter, school shooter, and like isolates me even more. And I need friends. And you should get to know me. And you should get to understand me. And you should try to make me a friend because chances are increasing. You might have a kid like me one day. Like one in 66 now. You could be a mom or a dad to a kid like me. Think. Smart in another way. So how we treat each other. And it doesn't have to be color of skin, language, culture. It can be things that are just like completely different. And what we want is for you to figure out how we help each other. Or how we get there. And find ways to be connected to the greater good. Every one of you, you hear, the, you hear the trash talk, trash talk, trash talk going on. You hear, you know, the words that are so hurtful and painful to each other. And we do it and we get it because it's modern culture, you hear it here and there. We say it sometimes and it's so painful, so hurtful. Sometimes anti-Semitic, sometimes racist, and we all cover it up behind the anonymity. And what we need to do is start looking in the mirror and seeing the answer to it all. How we treat each other. How we treat ourselves. How many of you, tell the truth, hear the word retard all the time? That's retarded, you're retarded. Come on, raise hands, raise hands. Put your hands up high, please. Let me say, come on, get real. Okay. I've been a coach in Special Olympics 38 years. I love special kids. I think they're living thermometers of love. They teach. And here I am at Special Olympics. You ever seen a kid run and laugh? Boom, the gun goes off. And this little girl, 10 years old, I know her dad, he's a firefighter in the city of San Francisco. Takes off running and laughing. She's going, yes, aha, woo. She gets all the way down to the finish line, 40 yards in front of everybody. And she stops. But I was her coach. And he thought she didn't understand. I go, no, Andy, come here. You win the gold medal. Come here to me. Walk to me. Snap it. No, coach. Oh, the, uh, no, you will not stick. Come here. Please walk to me, honey. Please, Andy, come here. No. And staying here for friends. You said that friendship is friendship. And she turned around and she put her hand out for her friend. She turned to put her hand out for her friend. And then all six kids held hands and came across the finish line together. She goes, whoa, together we all could win. Together we all could win. She's 10. She gets it. It shouldn't take a fire. It shouldn't take an earthquake. It shouldn't take the collapse of a bridge. It shouldn't take anything to teach us. We're going to need each other. Take care of your neighbors and friends. And when you see the snarky kid here who's going to walk out the door today and go, that was so stupid. That's the one in the most pain. A cynic is somebody who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And sarcasm, that word comes from the Greek term, the tearing of flesh off other people. Mark Twain, brilliant writer, he said, the person that holds those toxins in a pitcher to pour out on others does the most damage to their own container. So true. We have to be optimistic and kind and thoughtful, connected and grateful. Got calm, dot calm. Amenity of serenity. Grateful, not hateful. Mindful and kindful. Taking care of each other's hearts. Looking out for each other. I grew up in a working class community like this. We loved each other. And we knew the team was together, everyone, anyone matters. And sometimes that person you least expect is the one that takes you all the way to where you want to go. So encourage their heart and their spirit. 
Now I'll show you courage. I know that there's a young person or two or three here who could share with us what it feels like to be isolated or picked on or teased or laughed at or ridiculed. Or maybe you've been a bully and you've learned you don't want to do that anymore. And I would like for you to share with us what it feels like to be picked on or teased. And you can help us all grow in wisdom and kindness. And I know there's people, I ask you not to share anybody's name who's picked on you or even talk about home, but just what can we do to help it get better and solutioneer the genius that takes to be community. And I need your help. We need your help. And I know that there's kids of wisdom here who've been picked on and they can share with us. Maybe it was before, maybe it's now, I don't know. But I know there's smart young people here. Can I get a volunteer of somebody who can share? Who can share? We had tons of kids early this, uh, this afternoon from both groups. I know there's wise kids here who can help us. Who can share? Just come down and share right here with me. I know there's somebody here who needs to provide leadership and help us and make it easier for some kids. Come down. Big round of applause. Big round of applause. This is perfect. What's your first name? Uh, my name is Jessica. Jessica, tell us what you'd like to share. Um, well, I'm doing a lot better now, but um, it's a long journey. Like I've been through hell and back. Um, and I'm, Keep going. What was happening? I think the loneliest part of my life was about around fifth grade. I had no friends. Nobody wanted to talk to me. Like, if I sat in the back of the classroom, like all by myself. What no, was you doing to your heart? What was um, it? it just kind of hurt, and I felt so empty inside. Like. It was just a really lonely time. Like I had no friends, just nobody wanted to talk to me. Everyone just kind of steered clear of me and I had no idea why, because I was brand new to that school. I had done nothing to anyone besides try and make friends and they just, everyone hated me for some reason. Stop a second, don't move. When you want to know what courage is in life, it's not in football, or baseball, or basketball, or soccer, it's not in the arts, it's not in ASD, it's not running for office. This is the courage we need to honor and respect. The courage to speak truth to power to a community that needs to care more. This is the courage we need to honor. Give her a huge round of applause. What do we need to do for each other? What should we be thinking about doing? This is remarkable. You're a brilliant young man. I so honor you for your courage. You'll remember this day every day of your life because you stood up for all these kids that are afraid to stand up. They're shy or they're awkward or they're hurting. They get treated badly, they get isolated. But you did this and you should honor yourself and I honor you, I, I honor your spirit. What do we need to do for each other? Um, I think we should just like care about each other and just be there for each other. Even if you don't know that person, if you see someone being like sad or isolated, you ask them to join your group. You ask them to like just be a part of your group so that way they don't feel so lonely. Like, what does they, it do for them? What does it do for you? It makes you feel really good inside. I know when I see people like sitting alone at lunch, uh, or at least I used to, <laughs> I used to be like, you know, hey, do you want to come sit with us? And usually like you just see this big smile on their face and it just makes you feel really good and you feel like a good person and it makes you smile. Give her a huge round of applause. So in eighth grade I lost my best friend and she had been my best friend for a few years and it wasn't, I mean it was kind of my fault but uh, I kind of just like fell in my own like my own world. I didn't really talk to people. I was alone. I didn't really have friends and like you started to self isolate. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I kind of just like sat by myself and like all the people I hanged out hung out with weren't really my friends. They were just people that were there that were just sitting by me or next to me. I didn't actually have anyone to talk to. And I mean, 
What was that doing to your heart? It didn't really feel good and most people, you know, I know there are people in this room that were depressed and have anxiety and have those things, but like when you have anxiety attacks at school, because I've had those and they're not fun and it sucks, but I mean, I have better friends now, but back then I wasn't really that happy and I was What have you learned state. about yourself to survive? You're a remarkable spirit. You're a remarkable young lady. I honor you for your courage. Give her a huge round of applause. other kids and kids who are going um, through this? A lot of people don't show it when they're depressed or when they have anxiety. I know certain people that don't want to show it, they don't want to talk about it. And I mean, you don't have to push them to talk about it, but it's really nice to show them that you're there for them and that you're here no matter what. Because they might seem like the most happiest person in the world, but really they're dying inside and you don't even know it. You are an awesome. You, when you get to your college valedictorian, you will never have a better emotionally brilliant speech. Give a round of applause. My name is Michael. Michael, tell us what you'd like to share. So this issue has been going on for a while now, but it's not as bad as it used to be. So in my grade, not a lot of people use rolling backpacks, like backpacks with wheels on them. Right. So I use one of them, and that's actually been a really big part of why I've been bullied a lot too. What like, kind of stuff have they said, Michael, please? Like, well, especially mainly when I get on the bus, because like the bus picks me up, I'm one of the first stops on my bus. So when I go on there, people feel like, you know, when they see me on there, like, oh, it's the kid with the wheels. And then they all look at me like I am weird or that I've done something that should be like you know, punished. Right. And what does that do to your heart or any kids? Because you're, look, I know what a good man you are and a good sensitive heart. What does it do to your heart or any kid's heart? What is the anger that grows from that as well, and the resentment that grows? Because the anger is from me not feeling like I fit in and wanting to change. And for a while, I thought that what they were saying was true. And the bullying just wasn't from the bus. It was, you know, when I was walking through the school, when I was staying in lines, because people would always, you know, purposefully kick my bag and stuff and be like, oh, you're in my way, move. What does that do to any kid? Not just you, any kid. What does that do, that isolating stuff? What does it do? It just breaks your sense of trust. It just makes you want to like, go away and not talk to anyone. Stop us. We cannot say that when we walk out of here, you didn't hear this. You see what you're doing. And here's my thing with all of you. You said you're good kids. I know it. There's a couple of knuckleheads, I'm sure, in every school. But guys, one day you're going to be dads. You're going to be moms. What are you going to say to your kids? Oh, yeah. Man, there was this one kid who was just like you, son, that I used to love to torture and send home. And now I'm sorry when you're crying like this, I just don't know what to say to you. Because, you know, I was kind of a bully. I was so cool, I could make fun of kids like you. Hello? Hello? You're, you're good people. This is a small community. I grew up in a working class community. We never did this. Some of you are going off to the military. Some of you will make changes. Some of you will be needing the leadership. Leadership is not looking away when somebody's picked on our teeth. We in America do not like bullies. And if you're being one, knock it off. Because you're better than that. We're better than that. This community's better than that. We take care of each other's hearts. And we're gonna need each other more. You're good kids. We don't love you, but come on. Give this guy a round of applause. What do we need to do? So what you need to do, if you're in a situation like me, you need to realize that what you have that sticks you out of the crowd, that what people tease you on, that's only special to you. Only you have that. Like for me, I may have a wheel backpack, but you know what I use that to carry? I use that to carry my art. I carry my paper, I carry my pencils, and I draw. He's a really good artist, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Give him a huge round of applause. Uh, I'm Shawnee, 
I think for as long as I can remember, I've been depressed and it hasn't been good. And there was a time in this year actually, because high school is stressful. Anyone who tells you that high school isn't stressful is lying. Uh, and it got really bad about the middle of the year. And I just felt really alone and nobody was here. And we're a small community and nobody was here at all and we should be closer. And it just... We have enough guys. I'm sorry, we have enough time, okay. It just, it really sucks because... Don't stick. Oh, okay. Stick. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, because when you think that you're in a small community, you think that when you're having a hard time or when you feel like you're alone, people are gonna be there for you because you've known these people for your entire life. But when you need them most, they're not there. And it just, it really hurts. What has this done to most kids? Not just you, but the other kids. The stressors, the pressures of trying to get into school, college. What's this all, what's the, and the cyberbullying and the teasing and the ridicule, what's it all done? It just really breaks you because when you're upset, you feel like all of your insecurities and all of your problems are bared and shown to everyone and you're just frozen and you can't do anything about it. Give her a huge round of applause. Just a few more and then we're done, guys. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I can relate to the backpack thing. It's over there. I'm sure all of you have bared witness to hearing my glorious backpack run through the quad extremely loudly. But um, I think an important thing about bullying that a lot of people overlook when they're trying to teach about it is it's not like a lot of times it's really subtle. It's all passive aggressive. And sometimes it's not really what people say. It's what people don't say. Because I've seen people that are like, so vain that they'll get annoyed by being complimented and there's some people that just never get compliments they never get that sort of attention and it's like wow you actually care enough to say this to me whenever they do say something what do you need from all give her a huge round of applause that's, like, that's like a writer you're a writer what what do we need to do for each other what do we all need to do here in our community I think, I think whenever you do appreciate someone, it really makes all the more difference to just say something, honestly. Yeah. And why is that important? What does it do for them? What does it do for us? Like, you might not think it makes a very big difference. Like, you might think, like, oh, it comes off as weird whenever you compliment someone. But saying that can make the difference, for really huge difference for somebody, you know? A depressed person that can save their life, correct? Yes. Give her a huge round of applause. Uh, my name is Caitlin. Caitlin, what would you like to share? Uh, I guess I just want to share like what it mostly feels like. Like I've gotten to the point where I don't really trust people with compliments anymore. If you're a random person, especially if you're more popular, popular and you pop, and you compliment me, I'm not gonna believe you. I'm just gonna feel like you're insulting because you've me. Because you've been so hurt. Yeah, I guess. No, no, not guess. <laughs> Sometimes it just feels like a pity. Yeah, you can't trust, right? No, I can't. Stop a second. You're a remarkable young lady. I honor your spirit. Because here's the deal. You're, you're going off into the world, guys, pretty soon. Seniors, juniors, pretty soon. You have great teachers here. You have great parents and family. We've all we've dealt with some stuff, right? And what we need is to understand what she's saying. Just a few kind words. Don't use your words as swords. Use your words as shields to defend others. When you do that, I promise you, the whole study at Harvard said one thing makes a person happy. Today I'm honoring my friend Robin Williams. One of my best friends in the whole world. And we lost him. Words hurt. Think with your hearts. Think with your spirits. See a couple of his movies like Goodwill Hunting and, and uh, Dead Poets Society, Mrs. Doubtfire, all about human emotion and how to help each other. And you don't, if you don't trust, start trying to trust. Find that light. There is no struggle between the light and the dark. And until there is light, glow in the dark with optimism and love and respect and decency for yourself. Believe in you and your future. What, we live in a gossip town any small town, like my hometown, 
What people think of me is none of my business. Who cares? They don't know my heart. They don't know my journey. E.E. E. Cummings, the poet, said, to be yourself in a whole world full of people trying desperately to make you be exactly like them is to fight the greatest battle that ever was or ever will be. You're great young people, brilliant young people, kind young people. And when you see the kid, when we're walking out, some guy's going to go, some lady's going to go, it's stupid, it should, you know. They're the ones in the most pain. There are open wounds going out to spill on others, guys. Open wounds. Try to help heal them. Don't judge them. Don't resent them. Try to help them. Give everybody who shared a huge round of applause. Here's the last thing. You're on your way. Don't forget your parents and all of us here. We've lived through some stuff. I'm just going to share with you one of the little boys who got up here earlier. An eighth grade kid, seventh grade kid. He said, I lost two parents last year and I'm still getting teased. We need to help him and each other. You're great kids. I believe in you. I think all of us from the Sheriff's uh, uh, Athletic uh, League, we care about you guys. Think, think about how we can help each other and believe in those that believe in you and help those who don't believe in you by helping them heal and be wiser. You're gonna be great parents. And for those of you on and, and on your way off to do other things soon as seniors, Bring that light with you that you learned today and hear the hearts of those kids that share. Thank you very much. All right, partners, we'll, we'll a big round of applause for Michael Pritchard. Hi, I'm Ken Wicks. I'm with the Sheriff's Activities League, and our organization in Lake County is to help cops and kids get together in a positive way through activities like sports, uh, public speaking, drama, we do kayaking and junior giants. And so we are interested in impacting our community in the most positive way. Um, some of those things that we do also include guest speakers like Michael Pritchard standing behind me. Pretty famous guy, you might know him from Star Wars and some other uh, commercial work and voices. Um, but through his presentations, he is impacting our community by his words and we hope that this really carries forward to everybody and watches what he does, and that's what we're all about. So Sheriff's Activities League is for all of us. You say it's for all of us. How can I get involved? You get involved by getting a hold of us at the Sheriff's Activities League um, Facebook. You can give us a call um, through the Sheriff's Department or through Dan Camacho's number, and it's 707-349. Uh, 2484. That's right. Dan is the president of the Sheriff's Activities League. Um, really busy guy, but we're always looking for volunteers. And part of the SAL is if you have a good idea and you want to be a part of what we're doing, we'll do everything we can to facilitate your activity and get these kids involved in something bigger than what they've been doing.